are now, we are now recording. All right, let me go back to share screen and uh, the agenda. Okay, so um, we're now we're now under we're now being recorded. We'll do introductions, um, <clears throat> update. Uh, I think for Holly uh, Freewin is here and can talk to us uh, about Woodstock Library. I don't think we have anyone here from Black Futures or Master Gardeners. Uh, we are going to have an interview with uh, our special guest, Brianna Tarnauer, who is a, a resident of ours. Um, and I'm very excited to, to hear her interview. Then I'm going to um, summarize a report that, uh, 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 summarize a presentation that I heard at East Precinct about a new science-based strategy for locating stolen vehicles. It's really interesting. Then we'll uh, just, uh, we'll go quickly through some um, public interest announcements take a little break, then we'll plunge into board business. We have minutes and uh, several uh, actions to, um, to vote on. And I'm gonna talk to you about lessening the load here. Okay, here's Linda Goltzer admit, um, and not having such packed agendas in the future. We just had a lot to get done um, and uh, we're, we're gonna try to make it easier on, on ourselves. Under other business, we need to talk about whether we want to start meeting in person. And then I want to bring up uh, the subject of Harney Park uh, and we'll do that right at the end. Okay, so uh, let's get going. Um, uh, board members, uh, please tell, say your name, your position if you're an officer and your primary interest with regard uh, to the neighborhood. And also, if you wish to say your pronouns, please do. I haven't been um, suggesting that we do that because I felt kind of hounded by the virtue signaling police. But my queer friends have convinced me that offering pronouns is helpful to them. So I am going to uh, begin doing that. And you should do it if you feel comfortable, but not if you don't, all right? So um, Pam, would you go first, please? Sure, uh, Pam Hodge, she, her pronouns, and I serve uh, for the last few months as the treasurer. I represent BDNA on the City of Portland Lower Southeast Area Rising uh, Plan, and I'm working with Stephanie on the revisioning of the Brentwood Darlington Community Center. Okay, uh, Mo, thank, thank you, Pam. Go ahead, Mo. Hi everyone, um, Moham, and uh, so I am on the board, and I have been in Portland for I had to count it up real quick for eight years, and I've been in Brentwood Darlington for five, and um, I just simply put, I am I am involved with you great people, so that we can make um, our community safer and better in every way. And that's what I'm here for. Okay, very good. Thank you, uh, Mo. Uh, all right, so uh, Derek, would you like to introduce yourself? Derek, are you there? I just unmuted myself. Okay. Oh. <laughs> I'm Derek Covey, a board member at large. Uh, I kind of like to reach out to new neighbors. Um, and I've been in the neighborhood since 2012. Um, what else can I say? I'm also a realtor, um, and um, I also work at, at TriMed here recently. Um, I was joking with somebody being self-employed. I got to a point in my life where I needed some excellent health care, and God bless a government agency that TriMed is, has excellent health care, and happy to discuss that, or real estate with anyone that's interested. Um, and again, I'm doing outreach with new neighbors, so thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Derek. Uh, Gail, why don't you uh, introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Gail. I've been here since the age of the dinosaurs. <laughs> and I, movies in the park and crafting. That's, yes. Yes, which was really nice. I'm looking forward to more crafting. Oh boy, okay. Well, we're gonna mention it um, under public interest announcements. So, um, 
Okay, very fine. Uh, Kim DeLeo. Hi, Kim DeLeo. I am a board member and I also sit on the Southeast Uplift um, board. Uh, she, her pronouns and primary interests in the neighborhood would be involved around community cleanup. I'm very excited that we're moving towards making the community center maybe a place for people. So that's definitely a project that I would be interested in. And of course, you know, uh, speeding traffic. And uh, I'm not sure if we'll discuss Laura Lee's uh, or, or, the, or Stephanie's proposal for having the uh, community involved meeting, but I would be interested in that as well. Thanks. We we'll talk about that at the end of the um, okay at the end of the meeting. Um, I, the bylaws say that I I can bring it up as a motion. I can introduce a new topic into the agenda. So we'll do okay. that. Okay. Thank you very much, Kim. Um, okay, Laura Lee. Hi, Laura Lee Cole, and I am secretary on the board. I've been in Brentwood Darlington for about. Uh, well, I'm having my 10 year anniversary of buying my house in Brentwood, Darlington, but I've been in Portland about 30 years, maybe. And uh, my interests lie in a lot of directions in Brentwood, Darlington, but I think that we're doing really good work. So I think it's just keeping up the momentum. Okay, very fine. Thank you. Thank you, Laura Lee. Um, Casey, how about you? I'm just, again, it seems like we're all on mute today. Uh, so <clears throat> I just moved here uh, not too long ago, a few years ago, and met Stephanie, who is my neighbor. And she suggested that if I wanted to get to know the neighborhood, that I should join this group. And so I did. And that's why I'm here. Um, what I I am also interested in uh, um, cleanup of the neighborhood primarily, uh, and and uh, picking up garbage for probably the last year or so. Um, and my heart attack took me away from that for a little while, but I'm back at it. And uh, it's that's my contribution. Thanks. Well, thank you very much, Casey. That um, our street stays very clean because of you. So we appreciate I appreciate all of your 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 interest in um, in wanting to to get involved in the neighborhood. Thank you. Uh, okay, very fine. Um, Vivian is not here. She will join us later. And she has to put her baby to sleep, but then she can become a board member. Um, I'm Stephanie Frederick. I'm the chair. I've lived here for almost six years now. It's quite incredible. Um, um, she, her pronouns, or say my name, um, whatever you choose. And I am interested in community building in governance. Uh, oh, here, here is Vivian. Oh, boy. Vivian, hello. I was just introducing myself, so I will turn to you in a moment. Thank you for coming. I am interested in, in community building and in, in governance, especially how neighborhood associations can resume being very influential, directed, purposeful. We have some really exciting things that we're involved in, and I'm uh, grateful to be here. I'm grateful to know all of you. So those are my interests gratitude and interest in, in, in governance. Um, okay, Vivian, would you introduce mm -hmm. yourself, please? Yeah, hi, everybody. I'm Vivian. Um, been living in the area for several years, just joined the board um, this year, no, last year. And um, I actually, I have an 11 month 11 month old and I've enlisted a babysitter to help with her tonight, but I can kind of hear that it's not going so well. Um, the babysitter had to bring her her child with her. So there's a lot going on tonight. I might have to jump off early if if it's just chaos upstairs. Um, so oh, just okay. want to give you a heads up. And I am a little sniffly because we all have a cold in this house, so. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, okay. And, and uh, well, I'm sorry that you're 
struggling there. And one of your primary interests is in trees, tree canopy, and so on, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, I um, have had a long standing interest in botany and trees. And um, uh, recently, before taking a very extended maternity leave, I worked um, for a landscape architecture firm and where we worked on streetscape projects, parks projects um, at a high level planning level and also um, site construction. Um, so I'm still trying to stay involved and um, Stephanie um, handed me a very interesting project to look at, which hopefully I'll be able to talk about a little bit later tonight. Yeah. Okay, very good. Thank you. Thank you so much, Vivian. That Okay, so um, let's see. Um, I'm going to call on Brett and Lisa, and then um, Linda Goltzer and Holly Freewin uh, can introduce themselves when they give their their presentations. So let's hear from Lisa J, please. Hi, I'm Lisa Jameson. I use she her pronouns. I just moved to Brentwood, Darlington, a couple of months ago. And I've uh, been and lived in Portland for going on four years. And um, I'm a member of the Neighborhood Emergency Team. We're trying to get Brentwood Darlington's team back up and running. It's been kind of uh, dormant for a while. So um, one of my focuses is emergency uh, preparedness. And I would like to at some point talk to the Neighborhood Association about affiliating and uh, maybe participating in some <clears throat> events together, that sort of thing. So that's me. Okay, very fine. And you had, you were at a meeting two or one or two meetings ago, right? Yes, I was. Do you, do you think it'd be possible to take down the agenda so we could see each other's faces? Uh, uh, yes, I can stop sharing now. Absolutely. And I was also Thank gonna suggest here. If you need somebody to be a co-host and let people in, I'd be happy to do that. You're doing everything it looks mm -hmm. like. Okay, I think uh, yes. If if that becomes necessary, thank you. I think we're. I think we we probably have everybody. But thank you. I may very well call on you, as I'm floundering around here. Uh, all right. So I have your email address already, and I believe that I I've been in touch with you. So um, I'm delighted that you're you're at the meeting here, and um, we'll we'll talk some more about uh, net and emergency preparedness. Um, uh, and possibly um, Mo Ham will we, we'll, we'll like to uh, join that conversation and planning. Okay, uh, Brett, would you uh, like to, to introduce yourself? Yeah, sure. Uh, my name is Brett Farrell. Uh, I've lived in Portland for about four years. Uh, my wife and I just recently moved to Brentwood, Darlington about three months ago. Uh, sort of interested in you know, all aspects of the neighborhood, but uh, I work for the state of Oregon as an economist, specifically on energy issues. So I guess I have a specific interest in energy and uh, energy related issues for the community. So, Okay, wonderful. Thank you very much. Thanks for being here. Sorry. <laughs> okay. And what's that dog's name? What's your dog's name? Okay, well, never mind. All right. Um, all right, we will uh, wait for to introduce Brianna when she um, um, is interviewed. And uh, first, let's ask um, Linda Goltzer to tell us, introduce herself and tell us about Master Gardeners, please. You're muted. I always forget the theme that. tonight. <laughs> Um, Linda Goldser, uh, she, her pronouns. I'm the co-director of the Multnomah County Master Gardener Demonstration Garden, which is located just south of Duke on 57th Avenue. Um, I have volunteered at the garden since 2017, and I've been the co-director since 2020, and we'll continue that role through 2023. So even though I don't live here, I've spent many hours in the neighborhood over the last five years, and I've been coming to the uh, Brentwood Darlington neighborhood board meetings for close to three years. At the garden, we're interested in community inclusion at the garden. Um, even though gardening is a year-round event, 
the demo garden is semi-dormant semi during the winter. And uh, we did lose one of our large canopies just recently in the uh, last windstorm in January, um, but no trees were damaged. Um, after a few months of planning for the coming year, we're getting back to the physical garden work in earnest now this month. Uh, we'll be opening the garden again to the public as of March 6th from nine to noon on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and a few Saturdays uh, a month. So we invite everyone to stop by any day. Our pedestrian gate on 57th is open. That's okay. all I have. Thank okay, you. very good. Thank you, Linda. Um, let's see, before I go on to Holly, uh, I would like to call on Tina to introduce herself and just say a, a little bit about the uh, Spring Green. So I'm Tina, and I've been part of Brentwood Darlington off and on since 1999, um, and the current house that I'm in since 2000 eight or 12, anyways, for a while. And I had been a member of the board. I'm not now, I'm just now an active member of the neighborhood and love to just put myself out there for the things I'm passionate about without being required to do all the meetings. Um, so <laughs> I uh, did a proposal and it was approved for two different things. One was the, um, what, two to three times monthly craft circle time. And we've done one. Um, currently we're doing two, the second and fourth Thursday of the month with the occasional fifth Thursday once it gets actively better attendance and, and more people showing up. Um, and then I also did one for the spring green event, which is on April Fool's Day, mostly because of availability and people are like, oh, April Fool's, and we're not joking around. This is about the environment in our neighborhood and the wellness of where we're at. Um, so we have several vendors coming and collecting and doing workshops and participations. And so we have Green Century doing e-recycling out in the parking lot collecting and they do data wipe, but that's on their site, not on our site. So that's, there's a long list. And uh, I noticed that Stephanie got an email back today about exactly what they accept. I was out of the loop because I've been off, not on my computer for the last week. Um, and then we have the Master Recyclers program coming and doing a workshop. We have the Bikes for Humanity coming to do some collections if anybody does donations, but they're also going to be doing a maintenance workshop and just passing out information. There's going to be a one hour intensive, here's your once a year, twice a year kind of maintenance to keep your bicycle being your transportation, whether it's for pleasure or as your primary mode of, of transportation. Um, and then we've got the the seed library from the Master Gardeners um, garden, the, I just lost the word, sorry, but it's the community garden, there we go. Um, there's a, a seed library and they're bringing that. And many of us are bringing seeds to swap and plant starts to swap and basically having open conversation. I'm very, very passionate about growing and sustainability. Um, I'm currently converting the front quarter of my property into an edible permaculture forest to then put excess produce out on the street for ready available um, to just continue that cycle of neighborhood connectivity and wellness. Um, and then we also have, let's see here, seed swaps. I'm talking to the moderators of the Buy Nothing group to also potentially have a table just discussing, you know, instead of throwing things away into the dump, reusing, repurposing, and you, using the things that we've got and passing them along. So that's pretty much the big bang of the spring green, which is why it's not, the last time I headed one up, it was an e-cycling event only. And where we have grown beyond that. So Thank let's you. embrace the green. 
Thank you so much for coming up with this idea and all the work that that you've done on it, Tina. It's going to be a great event. And, and we got Metro funding for it. So um, we don't have to spend any money out of our checking account on this. So this is a, just a wonderful thing that's happening. OK, let's hear from Holly Freewin, please. How's Woodstock? Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much. I'm Holly Freewin. I use she, her pronouns. And I'm the administrator at Woodstock Library, right smack dab kind of in the community there. And I was, you know, making a goal to uh, go to the neighborhood associations that are near the library because a lot of the issues and concerns and joys that our neighborhoods face are brought to our doors or in our doors. We welcome the world into our doors and our librarian is starting to do outreach as is uh, some of our other staff doing outreach to the schools and the community and you know transportation plays really heavily into how we help people um, access resources we're not just there with books we do a lot of other things so it's it's i think it's in, it's imper imperative that we collaborate as much as we can i'm already thinking um um sorry lisa um we've done some workshops and presentations at the library around uh, net and and preparedness. So I, you know, I'm just thinking we have resources, we have a room, we, you know, people can use it uh, to do presentations that are open to the public. So I just want to be open and and provide what we what we can at Woodstock to the library to the community. So that's why I'm here, <laughs> and I appreciate everyone. You, I, I love the passion. So great. My wife used to work for Southeast Uplift, and she was a community organizer for quite a while. And so. Uh, you know, our neighborhood associations are sort of the, the bedrock of our, a lot of our communities. So thanks for doing what y'all do. Oh, oh, thank you so much for your presentation. Thank you. Go ahead. Thank you for being a librarian. Oh. <laughs> Librarians are the best. Yeah. <laughs> and we get a lot of love, that's for sure. <laughs> okay, good. I'm glad to hear that. Laura Lee had a question. Uh, Laura Lee. Hi, Holly. How big is that condo building going to be that's going up right next to you? Oh, my goodness. Oh, gosh. 100, 190 units. Oh, my goodness. Sorry. Oh, You're going to get it, a lot more business, so that's good. I will say the joy is watching little kids watch with their parents as the construction happens. It's adorable because that was the same thing my kids like to do. Um, the other upside, because I am a half full thinker, I am so positive and <laughs> enthusiastic that it probably drives people crazy. But uh, they are having parking in the building, which I think oh, that was my um, next question. from a sustainability standpoint, you know, we're trying to build density into our cities and and take away some of the need for cars. But at least that might. I don't know. What, what can I say? They've built some other places nearby that don't have parking. So I know that's a big issue. Huge issue. So, yeah. It's going to be called uh, Modera, I think which again, why? It doesn't mean anything, right? Well, it's gonna be called Hawthorne pretty soon. <laughs> you yeah. can find a place to park if you need to go. Right, yeah, that's a good point, yeah. Okay, hi, we've had someone join us named Mary. Hello, Mary. We are just finishing uh, our introductions. Would you like to introduce yourself? Oh yeah, sure. Um, my name is Mary. Um, yeah, I, this, it's been a few months since I've joined y'all. Uh, and yeah, and I live in Brentwood, Darlington. Okay, and what are some of your interests with regard to the neighborhood? Sure, well, I volunteered with Linda at the uh, Master Gardener uh, demo garden. Um, yeah, so I'm interested in those kinds of things. Um, I have an education background and a writing background. So uh, I can be of use in those places too. Oh, I'm writing that down. <laughs> You're in trouble now. <laughs> okay, so um, could you put uh, in, in the chat a way for uh, me to contact you? Okay, thank you very much. All right, very good. Thank you all of you for your introductions. Um, you're, you're so appreciated. Um, all right, let's turn now to our special guest, uh, Brianna Tarnover, Tarn, Tarnower, excuse me. And um, I'm very eager to hear what, to, to, to have her introduced to you all. Uh, go ahead, um, Pam uh, and, and Brianna. Okay, very good. Well, um, 
by way of background, Stephanie and I met Brianna last September <clears throat> as part of a, the citywide annual open studios tour for artists. And Brianna was one of uh, two Brentwood Darlington artists who opened her studio to the public that weekend. And I was just blown away. Uh, so Brianna's backyard includes two recently constructed outbuildings of approximately 200 square feet each. One is her studio, the other is her office. Her entire backyard can also serve as an outdoor exhibit, rehearsal and event space. And Brianna's extensive bio and representations of her work um, can be viewed on her website. Uh, and I'll put that in the chat in a, in a moment, but it's thinkerceramicarts.com. So uh, Brianna, I know you're gonna tell us a lot more about yourself, but basically, uh, she has a multifaceted background as a ceramics artist, a performance artist, PhD candidate in environmental toxicology, and an activist for social and environmental justice, and much, much more. <laughs> so uh, what really uh, intrigued me when I first looked at her bio was her statement that she was the girl who ran away and joined the circus. <laughs> and I never thought I would actually meet someone who did that. So I was fascinated, which led to our stop at her uh, studio. And then as she'll probably tell you, she later began and operated her own circus arts and production company in LA. So I'm um, very pleased to uh, introduce Brianna, your turn. Well, um, thank you, Pam, for that lovely introduction. Um, hi, everyone. Hi. Uh, so I'm gonna start off like everybody else. Um, I don't really have any kind of formal presentation planned, um, but I'm gonna start off. Uh, my pronouns are she, her. And I've lived in Brentwood, Darlington for about nine years now. And I have um, wanted to come to these meetings for almost the entire time that I've lived here. <laughs> uh, but I have not been able to do that, um, mostly because I have a, a son that ha has high needs and um, sort of kept me occupied uh, through much of that time. So I um, was also right up until before the pandemic working um, full time for a geospatial data sciences firm in downtown Portland. And so I just found that I was constantly on the hustle um, as far as time and not making it over to the meetings. But um, I was super excited to meet Pam and Stephanie at my open studios because I feel like that opened the door for me to um, come to the meeting and to meet everybody and to start getting involved in, in a more meaningful way. Uh, so yeah, I um, have a very wide ranging background. My mom used to joke that I was a Renaissance woman um, <laughs> and I very much was. In fact, in high school, I used to perform in Renaissance fairs. Um, that was one of my many interests. Um, along with, uh, so I have a background from a young age as a gymnast and then later rhythmic gymnastics, synchronized swimming. And then um, in college, I ended up, well, I did, um, I got two BAs in my, um, in my undergrad from UC Santa Cruz, where I studied biology and environmental studies with a focus in botany and sustainable agriculture and ethnobotany. And um, then while I was in college, it was the late 90s and uh, Cirque du Soleil was kind of a thing and Santa Cruz was close to the Bay Area. And next thing you know, I'm pulling on my old acrobatic skills and doing more and more yoga and throwing on some stilts and, um, and then not pursuing environmental science, but running away and joining the circus. So <laughs> that's how that <laughs> so I moved to San Francisco and I did that um, in, in the Bay Area for a couple of years. 9-11 um, kind of uh, impacted that pursuit. Um, I took off to Asia um, prior to 9-11, came back just in time for that to happen. Spent about eight months uh, traveling around in Asia. And um, when I returned, um, I ended up moving to Southern California, working at SeaWorld um, against all of my environmental 
uh, <laughs> yes. uh, heart uh, impulses. So um, long story short, I ended up staying in, in the Southern California in, in the that area for the next six or eight years, um, running my company, building um, a pretty successful, you know, by uh, art, art life standards, uh, you know, art career um, down there, running my own production company and talent agency, and uh, essentially, um, you know, having opportunities to travel the world and um, perform and bring events uh, to people. Um, but at some point I, um, well, I was injured and I realized that it was not, um, I wasn't interested necessarily in the business aspect of entertainment. And that was sort of the natural progression. So I went back to school and at that time decided that I was gonna go to medical school. Um, it was sort of a long involved process and I ended up having to do a couple years of schooling in order to pursue medical school. And in the process of that became intimately um, involved with the medical world as a patient and soon decided I didn't want to go to medical school anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so um, just uh, to kind of bring it long story short, I did get, um, I did end up pursuing um, a master's degree at UCLA. Um, I have an MS in environmental health sciences with a focus in molecular epidemiology or environmental biology, um, depending on how you look at it, um, which boiled down to um, me studying emerging infectious diseases, um, transmission dynamics and environmental reservoirs of that. So you can see I've kind of gone all over the place um, with my interests. Um, I, my mom likes to say that I, um, I have a pendulum that I've been swinging on my whole life between <laughs> art and science. And, um, what I like to say I'm doing now is uh, no longer swinging back and forth, but integrating. So my purpose um, with everything that I am up to these days is integration of science and art, is integration of all of these various interests that I have performing with um, expression. So um, writing, uh, you know, as an academic, bringing that all together. And I'm still, you know, so, Long story short, I said that a couple of times now, and then it keeps being very long, but um, my, my interests now are focused on, on what is what my art practice is. And what, what my art practice is right now is building my interest into businesses and a nonprofit organization. So my focus at this time is my thinker ceramics, thinker ceramic arts, which I started right before the pandemic. And I've really just been sort of treading water with, but it's been a springboard for me to come up with what some of my bigger visions are to move on into the future. Um, and also to be self-sustaining. So, cause once I have some uh, income coming in from this business, then um, I can actually start to actualize some of the, uh, the environmental justice uh, pursuits that I have in mind. So three prongs, I have Thinker Ceramic Arts, I have Maker to Market Incorporated, which is, um, I plan to make a slip casting manufacturing plant here in Portland, um, but smaller scale, um, the idea being uh, makers can come to me and I help them design the um, molds that they need and the production capabilities to um, produce uh, small batch quality ceramics uh, for local markets. So uh, sustainability is built into that. I forgot to mention as part of my master's, I also um, pursued a, it's called a leaders in sustainability certificate. And that was through, um, the Anderson School of Management. So I also have a, a sustainability um, uh, certificate. So all in all, um, the third prong of, of this sort of mini empire that I'm building is um, my nonprofit organization working title or working name is makebreathelive.org. And um, my main focus with that is um, environmental justice is uh, in particular looking at um, the effects of heavy metal, uh, specifically heavy metal air pollution 
um, and the potential relationship with autoimmune endocrine disorders um, and in our neighborhood specifically from um, precision cast parts. Um, I have a research study planned that I spoke extensively with Pam and Stephanie about, and I'm happy to talk with any of you about in more detail at any time. Um, I've, I've even written up all of the questions for the survey, um, though I can't find the app that I did that in. <laughs> Yay, internet. Um, so I wrote, uh, and I, I have the study design all laid out. Really, it's just been a matter of having the time and the money and the effort and the energy to do that along with everything else. So, cause I'm also still just trying to uh, stay afloat with the disruption that the pandemic created for me. So um, yeah, that was a lot of words. Um, well, thank you. Thank you so much. It's just overwhelming what you do <laughs> and we're, we're so glad to know that you are in our midst. Um, I think um, when we were talking uh, earlier uh, on the weekend, um, you know, we, we said we would do everything we can to um, support your efforts. And if we hear of um, employment opportunities, if we hear of gr grant money, we're gonna shoot you an email or call you right away. So okay. I feel, um, if any of, any of us say, you know, let's, mm -hmm. uh, Let's get on the bandwagon here and support Brianna. Um, anything we hear, let hear of that could relate to what she's working on. Let's let's let her know. And um, thank you, thank you, Brianna. Uh, so, I uh, did want to say one more thing about um, all of it. I'm, I don't have a clock in front of me, so I've probably talked too long. But um, I'm You're actually fine. I finally have settled on some products that I'm um, actively making right now. It's, I've been in a sort of long process of figuring out what I want to sell, and I haven't found things that I really like, but I actually um, finally have something. And so I'm going to be actively uh, making those and updating my website soon with um, products for sale. So that will also be a really great way to get things going, um, is if I can just start making enough stuff to actually sell. Um, so I just wanted to show you guys real quick, because I'm just oh, so boy. excited. Okay, good. Let's see. So um, it's kind of hard to see. Let's see if I can tilt this. So this is like um, charcuterie board and appetizer dishes, um, but they're very, oh gosh. Can you, okay, there, know. okay, a little more, keep, keep going there. Okay, we can almost see the whole thing. Yeah, but yeah. not quite so close. Yeah, I'm gonna have okay. to go shopping. <laughs> Beautiful, <laughs> yeah. These aren't posted yet, but I'm really excited about how the glazes came out. And uh, oh, the so, rose color is gorgeous in the bottom of the yeah. bowls there. Wow. Isn't that great. Mm -hmm. And then there's um, here. Let me see if I can flip. I'm having a little bit of a technical technical issue here. So I also have these little bowl. Uh, plates so and that idea of being very rustic and i don't know if you can see the color very well but um so it's sort of a bluish gray is that right yeah so this one is a is a a brown clay uh -huh. and then it's yeah it's got this honey colored glaze on there and then this one these are a white clay body and there's a, a few different it's hard to see yeah, no, we're no, we're you're doing a good job of showing us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These are very highly yeah. unusual and original, just wonderful. And, and so then these are some other plates I've been working on. So anyway, just wanted to give you a quick. And then these are products that I I had worked on, but I'm not totally in love with. Um, and so I'm not ready. I'm not planning to produce these in any quantity. But um, these are things that I had on display at. Uh -huh. They're very cheerful. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, well, lovely. Thank you so much for sharing everything about your, your studies and your career and all these things that you're interested in. And uh, it's very interesting to me amongst many things that given your background, you ended up 
uh, close to precision cast parts. <laughs> you came up from Southern California to be here for PCC, right? Um, and uh, <laughs> yeah, no, well, I mean, I came up here to do my PhD at, um, at PSU, but yeah, I, I know, ironic. Um, and, but I think that it's actually a perfect opportunity for me to continue with that integration because of, um, in my undergrad and in my and in my master's, I was very focused, um, and my PhD was going to be about toxic um, toxicity of environmental pollutants. So, um, I am an extremely interested in environmental justice, and I always have been. So, um, the the experience of having friends in the neighborhood, having their children become sick, um, in a way that highly points to uh, this possibility of it being from heavy metal pollution, um, you know, that it, it, it strikes a chord for me that I can't ignore. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, you know, we would, we, it would be wonderful if you could um, um, survey people and get some data here, because it seems like precision cast parts is getting off pretty easy. Uh, <laughs> So, so you know, if I could add here uh, for people on the call that don't know, I mean, I served on the Citizens Advisory Committee for Oregon Health Authority when it did the environmental uh, risk assessment of precision cast parts from 2016 to 2019. So I've shared that information, including the critique by an independent uh, toxicologist uh, with Brianna's just more background for her future work. So Brentwood Darlington was very um, activated uh, by uh, pollution emissions from precision cast parts in 2016. I mean, we packed meeting halls at uh, Lane and the Monarch Hotel. I mean, hundreds of people turned out for this. And as probably most of you are aware, there, there was finally a settlement uh, based upon property values uh, because at the time the lawyers handling the case thought it was too difficult to draw the nexus between health outcomes and pollution. But I think Brianna, you're right. I mean, that's really the bigger piece of the uh, puzzle. So I'm so excited that as you have time, you know, your background is perfectly suited to uh, take it to the next level. So thank you. Yeah, and um, just one last point on that, because I know we need to move on with the agenda, but I um, I wasn't able to get involved in those meetings in 2016, but I was deeply uh, paying attention. And um, on my own time, spent many, many hours um, digging into <clears throat> literary data, um, you know, the, the actual numbers coming out of uh, PCC and um, out of the various agencies looking into it. I've spent hours writing up various studies and I've looked into the literature um, linking um, heavy metal uh, pollutants with various uh, types of disorders. So it's, um, it, it is it is something that I, uh, if I, I hope actually maybe I can uh, find one or two other people in the neighborhood that want to get as deeply involved in, and actually start looking into this in, in more detail. It will help keep me organized and keep me accountable to my plans to have other people that also want to get involved. So count me in. Okay. Your child. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And we'll spread the word. And we're, we're so happy that you are in our neighborhood. It's so good to know you. And we will send you word of resources as we hear of them and, and see if we can help you connect with people uh, as well. And thank you so much for, for coming in and, and sharing your your world and your life with us. Um, we really deeply appreciate it. And thank you, Brianna. Yeah. We hope that we'll see you at future meetings, but- with, I will uh, here. Uh, yeah, I just have to set a calendar alert. And um, I will I will let you know when my website is updated and when I'm going to have stuff available to order and pre-order too. Okay. Oh, oh, stupendous. Yes. And maybe yeah. we'll have to take a field trip over to your your studio. That <laughs> yeah. that would be really fun. <laughs> um, community and neighborhood events over the spring and summer in my backyard. So that's a goal as well. Oh, okay. Well, um, yeah, keep me informed so that I can. Spread the word to whomever you would like me to that I can. So 
Okay, wonderful. All right. Thank you again, Brianna. Very yeah, good. Okay, and we're exactly on time. So um, yeah, thank you. And we've packed a lot in, a lot of information here already. And um, so now we're gonna pack in some more. Um, first, uh, I before we go to the announcements of public uh, interest, I would like to um, describe to you a presentation that I heard at East Precinct um, of the Portland Police Bureau on a new approach to identifying stolen vehicles on the streets. And um, the reason I'm giving this report is that first, the officers there wanted to make a presentation and I put them on the agenda and then they withdrew, then they decided to have the presentation at East Precinct, but it was too late to get it off the agenda. So I went there to um, listen so I could report in, in their place. And then they, and they said, I listened to the presentation. They said they would send uh, um, information you know, to support what I had just heard at the presentation. And then now they've told me, um, oh, just don't talk about it at February. Uh, we'll come in March. <laughs> it's, it's too late. We're, you know, I have, we, we have to abide by the, um, by the agenda. That's what the public counts on. So I'm going to give you a summary of what I heard about this brand new strategy that uh, patrol officers in East Precinct are following to uh, identify stolen vehicles and apprehend uh, bad guys. <laughs> um, uh, who, stole, who stole them. So it's very interesting. So first I'll, I'll start out by um, saying that uh, they told us that of Portland's three precincts, we re they re East Precinct receives the most 911 calls. So we, we keep the police the busiest. Uh, um, and they also told us that in cities across the nation, Portland is number five in stolen vehicles per, per thousand people or whatever. Um, and they also told us that vehicle theft is invariably associated with other crimes like illegal gun possession, murder, drugs, retail theft, trafficking, hit and run and dangerous driving amongst other things. Um, so um, East Precinct was struggling in their ability to um, identify stolen vehicles. They got lots of reports from people and, and our neighborhood was one of the, the is high on the list of neighborhoods that experienced stolen vehicles. Um, they were not getting as many stolen vehicles as they wanted. And so they devised a new strategy. One of their officers came into the police force from the world of computer science and he was very sold on the scientific approach. And he said, oh, he got his fellow officers together to say, okay, we don't have really enough resources, we don't have enough staff, uh, but we can do better in, in, um, in the way we attract, identify uh, stolen vehicles and apprehend the thieves. And so um, what, um, what they did is the following, but first let me say that he explained that it's very dangerous to track down and retrieve stolen vehicles, especially you know when you stop, stop vehicles on the street, it's very threatening. Um, and then he said, it's very difficult for them to apprehend um, vehicles that are moving on the street, that are being driven. Uh, and part of the reason is that uh, Portland regulations forbid them from pursuing vehicles. So they may pursue them, uh, I mean, they may follow them without a, you know, a full-blown pursuit um, to the edge of Clackamas County or into Gresham. But once the, the, the bad guys cross that border, they're home free. The Portland police cannot go, um, cannot apprehend them in Clackamas County or in Gresham. So they, they have, a, East Precinct has a couple of small planes and they can watch, they can observe stolen vehicles being driven erratically and dangerously on the streets. Um, but um, uh, it's, it, it doesn't always lead to apprehension. Um, and they showed us videos, which I hope that, that we'll be able to see at, at the official presentation. 
But in any case, they've been relying on what they call low level stops, where if you see a car that whose taillights have failed, uh, maybe it's a stolen vehicle, they stop it. Um, and they may find um, that um, the, the drivers have, have done something with the car. For example, they may have a fake trip permit. That's a document, I didn't know what that was, but I learned that it's the document you get from a dealer after you, you buy a car and drive it off the lot and you don't have license plates yet. So you have a, um, a document that you, you tape to your window and it takes the place of um, license plates and uh, many stolen vehicles display fake trip permits. And they, you can only find out that they're fake if you stop the car and start investigating. Or they may uh, remove the license plates and have a dealer placard in its place so that um, an investigation leads nowhere. Um, or they may uh, have stolen plates that lead or, or, or are altered that lead nowhere and may lead back to a dealer, but are not really the plates that are associated with that vehicle. They also see that windows that are darkened with aftermarket tints um, are, are often indicative of, you know, that something is wrong with that, that car. Um, so they, um, they used those and other characteristics to stop vehicles, but they were not satisfied with the their ratio of stolen vehicles to stops that they were experiencing. So they did the following. Um, they turned to something called evidence-based practice, which is a methodology used in medicine to analyze treatment outcomes. And they asked themselves, how does a stolen vehicle say, I am stolen? And working together, all of the officers, all of the patrol officers who work on stolen vehicles got together and, and described their, what they do to possibly, or to identify what they think is a stolen vehicle. They gathered all their characteristics together and, uh, and did research uh, also, and they bundled these characteristics into a, 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 a set of enrichment factors. They're called this, that's jargon for uh, telltale clues, right? So then to help them evaluate their, their, their telltale clues, they went to OHSU, to the director of the Knight Cancer Institute at OHSU. His name is Dr. Jeffrey Tyner. And apparently he's renowned for what's called pattern analysis, which is a form of evidence-based practice. And he um, has used it, to, used it to judge medical out, outcomes following treatment. And they asked him, the officers asked Dr. Tyner to help them create a strategy for using evidence better to stop, stolen, to stop cars, find stolen vehicles. And Dr. Tanner was very interested and he rounded up other people at OHSU, statisticians and others to help them. And, um, and this group worked with East Precinct for months, helping them to refine a strategy and create a plan for operations that would improve their ability to retrieve stolen vehicles. And they wanted to, their goal was to reduce the number of times that they stop vehicles and yet get more stolen vehicles. So let me show you, I'm gonna share screen for a moment here and uh, show you what they found. This is their progress report. They found that um, this is the before column, before they did evidence-based practice. And this is um, uh, data collected over five shifts several patrol cars per shift. The average number of traffic stops per shift, and mind you, this is several patrol cars uh, operating, was 86, but under the new regime, they stopped only 35. Under the old regime, one in 31 stops was a stolen vehicle. Under the new regime, one in five stops is a stolen vehicle. Under the old regime, one in six stops resulted in an arrest. Now it's one in three. The illegal gun ratio 
one in 144 stops. Now it's one in 21 stops. So they told us that um, uh, in the, over these 14 sh shifts, they stopped 493 vehicles, 100 were stolen, 157 arrests, 187 warrants. I don't know the difference between a warrant and an arrest. You'll have to help me. And 23 illegal guns. They also had 95 eludes into Gresham or Clackamas County. But I am very interested in um, the fact that they are making, they're stopping far fewer people. That means they're not, they're, their level of what you might call harassment has dropped hugely, which is undoubtedly wonderful for people who are low income, maybe people of color who don't have a lot of money to keep up their cars and they have this, you know, the broken tail light. Well, now the officers aren't stopping that car because that car doesn't exhibit any of the other enrichment factors that say I am stolen. And so this to me has a, an environmental justice uh, effect that I, I think is really, uh, really important. I, I myself was very impressed. And I know that they are just at the very beginning of this, um, this operation, but it seems to me that they uh, have definitely shown progress. Okay, I'm gonna stop share here. All right, so they believe their strategy is working and they are uh, now working with people in the uh, district attorney's office to determine exactly what evidence um, the courts need to lead to successful prosecution. So this is another really important part of, um, of their strategy, because if you can't prosecute these people, then there's no point in even trying to stop them, right? To apprehend them. So successful prosecution is the goal. Uh, and so the officers told us that East Precinct is the only police division in the whole country that has adopted an evidence-based strategy for carrying out the stolen vehicle work. And now that they have data to show that, um, you know, it's really quite effective what they're doing, they're starting to share their story with, um, with others. And for example, they had Mayor Wheeler, uh, they invited him to come visit and he did. And uh, he wanted to know, <clears throat> he watched them in action, I guess he went on some ride alongs and he wanted to know why they couldn't pursue the bad guys. And they said, well, that's a policy of your police bureau that you're in charge of, <laughs> right? And he hadn't realized that. Laura Lee, yes. Uh, Stephanie, did you say that they are gonna join us in March? I think so. But okay. my experience now with them has been very erratic. So I'm, um, I'm, I'm gonna verify that, but I, I can't be fully predictive at this yeah. point. I think I'm that- try. Yeah, I, I hope that they can, because um, maybe we can get a list of specific questions for them. Um, something that's very fascinating to me and also um, not fun for Brentwood Darlington neighbors who border Clackamas um, and Gresham is, you know, we're getting a lot of folks dumping stolen cars north of Clatsop. And then they literally cross over Clatsop because, and then the East Precinct officers can't pursue them because they're now in Clackamas. And so there is like this, um, and I understand what they're saying, but those are those are the kind of questions I would like to talk to them about is as far as prosecution goes, they if they can't follow them into Clackamas um, or Gresham, there seems to be a hard stop there with that whole situation. Even if we have people on cameras, even if we have faces, <laughs> But as soon as they cross over into the next uh, county, um, what what do residents do at that point? And so I, I would love it if they would come in March so that we can just kind of drill them on just for, for more knowledge. For Oh, for absolutely. I'm gonna do my best to make this happen, but I, I'm just telling you that 
I can't promise it, but I want it to happen. And we will, e e eventually it will happen, uh, but March would be good. So yes, note your questions, everybody, so you don't forget them. And we do need to ask them questions about the pursuits, whether that's a good idea. They're, working, they're reaching out to Gresham and Clackamas County, both to, um, uh, for inter, you know, for cooperative agreements that I think will allow them to um, to pursue um, both ways. You know, both, both the, all the different police departments can pursue across borders. Perhaps uh, I don't know. You know, we'll have to ask them. And uh, thank you, Laura Lee. Yes, we need. I've to seen I've seen quite a presence of Clackamas uh, patrol cars actually south of Clatsop, um, which is encouraging um because i don't see a lot on our side um because we're understaffed and i understand that we have a very high percentage of of like you said 911 calls for um a smaller staff um but yeah there's it's it it would be very helpful um just so that we can understand the whole concept between going between the two different uh county lines and yeah, no, I totally, I totally agree. I mean, they have information that I can't provide you, and and uh, and we need to be able to to uh, question them directly. So it'd be great if they come, and then we can advertise it well to get residents to uh, join the meeting and so on. So that's that's the goal. <laughs> We're aiming at that goal. Um, so let's see. Uh, let me just finish up here. Um, they they're asking for. Uh, more resources, more staff, more discretion to be given to officers to pursue malefactors. Uh, they told us something interesting that I found hard to believe, but um, I guess it's true. They said that police cars are designed to crumple on impact and crumpled cars cost 9,000 to $15,000 each to repair and they need cars that do not crumple. Has anybody ever heard of this? Of Crown Victorias, for example, that that crumple on impact. Um, but anyway, they they said that no, this is true. Um, so one of the things that's going to happen soon is they reached the the officers reached out to local media to see if they'd be interested in uh, investigating this story, and KGW said yes, we'll do it. So KGW has been given all the data. They've been given access to the people at OHSU. And, uh, and they're working on a, a report that should be published um, fairly soon and completely independent of the police department. Uh, I learned that um, that just recently KGD, KGW reporters uh, asked to do some ride-alongs with the patrol officers to watch them at their work. Okay, Laura Lee. Oh, you're clapping. Okay, good. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, all right, that, that concludes my presentation. This is what I learned when I went out to East Precinct. So the next step is to get the officers here, I think, and, um, or to a meeting, maybe a multi-neighborhood association meeting, but we'll, we'll figure it out. But we need to be able to question them directly and get more detail than I've been able to, um, to provide and get some feel for the, what they see is going to happen going forward. Holly, yes. Yeah, I was just curious. Um, what is Brentwood Darlington's relationship with the Portland Police Bureau? I'm just curious. What I, is I, our? I, well, I don't know. <laughs> what? Okay. What, do you, what? I mean, what is? I'm just wondering. You know, oftentimes there's there's some sort of a of a connection between the neighborhood association and the Portland Police. There's liaisons and such and. And I know Southeast Uplift has some community, how are they, community safety people, liaisons who do sort of help, you know, community members with a variety of, of law enforcement issues. I'm just, I'm just curious. Oh, I see. Well, you know, something, uh, Pam, could you speak to the, the, the safety plan that, and then I'll get to you, Gail, but um, Pam. Well, I think the relationship Holly has, um, uh, sort of fallen into um, disrepair. Uh, and I'm not quite sure why that is. We've certainly had board turnover, but at one time there were uh, officers at the Brentwood Darlington Community Center. At one time they had a uh, community um, precinct at Hazeltine Park, which has since been um, 
be constructed in uh, park redesign. And there was a plan um, published by East Precinct in 2018, um, uh, specific to Brentwood Darlington. It was uh, East Precinct Livability Action Plan. So I think this is something that as time permits, you know, Brentwood Darlington Neighborhood Association needs to re-engage with East Precinct or vice versa, they need to re-engage with us. But, you know, there's been a few years since we've had an active relationship. Thank you, thank you very much, Pam. Gail, yes, you have a question. Yes, hypothetically speaking, there's supposed to be a police community office in the community center. Now there used to be DC before COVID. Um, we once had a neighborhood officer who was responsible for Brentwood Darlington and he would come to all the meetings. And once upon a time, he announced we had zero, zero, zero drug houses operating in Brentwood Darlington, uh, which was cool, brief, but cool. I was going to say, how long did that last? Yeah. <laughs> but, but the next neighborhood meeting, we had two or three back. But for, for a hot minute there, we were crime free. Nice. Um, that, was, that was Sergeant Tig, right? Yeah, he was one of them. Oh, one of them. Okay. So yeah. I don't know. I'm sure we talked to somebody in the East Precinct about if and or who our neighborhood officer is or could be and invite them. I say optimistically. Right, I tried to call a uh, contact the neighborhood response team the other day and I haven't gotten a call back. Um, it might be Craig, Craig, Officer Craig Anderson, but I'm not sure. Um, and I don't think my message got passed on because we haven't gotten a call back in two days. Yeah, they're kind of understaffed. Yeah, no, they are. They said they've been hiring, but the, the um the 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 problem is that the the new hires have to go through um some kind of education course at a police academy oh, yeah. type oh, thing. Yeah. And there's a bottleneck there. There aren't enough instructors. Right. And, um, and so they, they've they just got people doing paperwork when they could be out apprehending, yeah. <laughs> apprehending bad guys. Yeah. Um, yeah. Maybe so. we could gently remind them at East Precinct that we have an office available for them yeah i think we're, we're talking with andy nelson about that that old sign is still there in the hallway yeah and um so probably that you know it seems to me like there's a, a good probability that that we could have that again that office available again so yeah it's on our list of uh, things to do with bdcc for yeah. sure uh, there we go Okay, well, so, all right, that was the stolen vehicle presentation, and we'll have more stolen vehicle stuff in the future from hopefully, or yes, from the officers themselves. Um, all right, so now we're a little behind time because I, this took a while, but it's important. It's an important subject because it's um, a thorn in the side of Brentwood Darlington residents. Uh, um, let me see what I, what we should talk about quickly to try to catch up. Trees in the street, Vivian, uh, she had to leave because of her little daughter. So we'll, uh, I'll send an update on that. Uh, I'll just say the first crafting circle met on January 6th at the Brentwood Darlington Community Center. Um, on um, That was last week, I guess. And um, um, and that was, uh, that went well. I understand that was a lot of fun. It's nice to see the, the center being used again for something joyful and uh, and convivial. So I'm very happy that, that that worked. I ran over and let you all in and then I had to leave, but um, we should see if we, if there it can be a better system there. But in any case, I'm very happy to come over and, and uh, open the door. Uh, um, we can, I can send you an update on line 10. I'll send a written update. Um, 
but we, we've lost line 10 on, on Duke Street now. It's gone back up to Herald Street. Uh, on the other hand, like, uh, well, I am talking about it. Gives us a straight shot up 72nd to the Mount Scott Community Center, which is about to undergo a huge renovation. And, um, okay, Pam, would you like to give an update on the TGM planning effort? Yeah, I'll, I'll make it very brief. So um, the uh, TGM study, also known as Lower Southeast Area Rising, um, the Project Advisory Committee met a few weeks ago, and I'll put the project page for the study for those who want to delve uh, more deeply in the chat in a moment. But basically, the update is they've scheduled um, to release a discussion draft in March with another round of planned community feedback uh, scheduled for April. And they're thinking both in-person meetings and online uh, surveys to get feedback on the discussion draft. And then it goes to the planning commission and then eventually to the city council probably in June. So since we, uh, I think last met, uh, the TGM planners have included in the anti-displacement plan section of the uh, planning study uh, a more fleshed out discussion of the future role of the Brentwood Darlington Community Center uh, serving as a safety net for residents to avoid um, displacement and houselessness and uh, provide uh, social services, including the funding of probably two positions. Uh, they're thinking funding through the Joint Office of Homeless Services. And then the additional uh, mention in the draft since we last met was uh, we shared with them the letter that the board sent to Commissioner uh, Vega Peterson with the uncertainties around the extension of the lease for the Brentwood Darlington Community Center and the need to establish title to the building. And so hopefully the planners are now linked in uh, to help us pursue with both uh, Multnomah County and Portland Public Schools the resolution of those issues. And then finally, in this uh, upcoming round of uh, community engagement uh, with the planning study in April, uh, Stephanie and I asked the planners if they wouldn't please include a survey question or two about our vision for the um, Brentwood Darlington Community Center. So I think it was time uh, well spent. We've, we've got more uh, ties now between our two major initiatives, the planning study and the re-envisioning and repurposing of the Brentwood Darlington Community Center. So, yay. Yes, it is. Uh, that all of a sudden there's a momentum building. Uh, we'll give you an update, written update on this, but um, now, you know, we have um, with the city connected with the Brentwood Darlington Community Center, we have life returning to the center. We have Impact Northwest completely dedicated, uh, they're gonna be adding board members to the, the committee uh, that discusses um, getting, getting support, straightening out the legal issues, uh, redoing the building to become a resilient center and uh, straightening out the, um, the, the, the legal uh, irregularities and so on. So all of a sudden it's really a going concern. It's very exciting. And we, it's impact in BDNA, we're the partners in this, and it's a wonderful role for us. I'm very proud of us that we are able to um, to be there for the building. It's such a wonderful building. And uh, Gail, you told me that you uh, you had a hand in in the in looking at the original floor plans and making suggestions. Is that right? I suggested the fireplace and the skylights. <laughs> Ah, nice. Okay. Wonderful. Well, it's um, the more I get to know the building and, and now I've gotten a pretty complete tour of it, except for some of the most um, cloistered offices, you know, I'm just so impressed with how beautifully designed it is for its purpose um, to serve. Um, it, it's a base for impacts child development program, but also it's a place for uh, community meetups and gatherings like the uh, crafting center for a uh, crafting circle, for example. 
And uh, I just I just love its design. And I'm so happy that we're all engaged in preserving the building and, and putting it to new use. And um, it's a really a wonderful moment uh, for us. Okay. All right, fine. Well, so now we're way behind in the um, agenda. We could take a break and resume, or we could just plow through as fast as possible. What, what would y'all like to do? Okay. Keep going. Is that what you're saying, Mo? Okay. Is it all right with, with you if we just keep going? All right, fine. Okay, Laura Lee, um, would you um, like to um, address the minutes? Yes, let me turn my heat off because it's very loud behind my head. Hold on. Okay. Um, yes, I sent out um, December and January 2022 minutes and also January 2023 minutes to our board members. And um, uh, Stephanie is the only one that responded with some corrections, which I have made. So I would like to move and on the corrected, uh, it was November, it was November and December 2022 and January 2023 minutes to be approved by the board. I second the motion. And by the way, they're very, they were just very teeny corrections. So, uh, <laughs> thank you very much, Laura Lee, for doing I, that. I really appreciate, because sometimes it's mind numbing, so I really appreciate when people <laughs> respond to me with corrections that I don't oh, see. Yeah, no, that I, I understand that makes it easier. I just want everyone to know that the corrections were not serious corrections. <laughs> you do a great job. And okay, so I seconded it. All right, so we have a motion on the floor to approve the minutes of November, December 22, and January 23. Um, let me call the roll, Gail. All right. Um, yes. It's Pam. Sorry, did you call my name? I did. Do you want to vote yeah, on the I, other? Oh, I, okay, fine. And uh, Casey, yay or nay? Are you there, Casey? I'm or here, I'm here. <laughs> do you vote to approve the minutes as corrected? Absolutely, let's do it. Oh, okay, wonderful. Mo? Yes, I do. Okay, Derek? Aye. Okay, Vivian is not here, so... Um, I'll call on Kim. Aye. Okay, and I'll call on myself. Aye. All right. So um, that the um, the motion is carried unanimously by those of us who are here. Okay. I'm, very not, fine. I'm not sure you called me, but I'm an I as well. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't call you. Of course. All right. Well, and you're the the perpetrator of the whole thing here. Okay. Sorry. Uh, thank you, Laura Lee. Uh, all right. Very good. All right, let's go on to the treasurer's report. I'm going to share screen so that you can see the report. And um, here it is. Okay. Okay. Um, oh, oh, just a minute. Wait, wait, wait. I'm, I'm, uh, I have to get to it. Okay, there we go. Too many things to share. Okay, very good. Okay, so this is the revised version that I sent to the board uh, last Monday. And Lorley, I agree. I mean, at some point, your eyes just glaze over. So there are two minor changes that I highlighted from the earlier uh, version that was sent. But basically, um, you know, we've had a small, uh, our usual small dividend on our uh, Vanna's checking account, 27 cents. <laughs> and then uh, I've included, based upon the prior board meeting, the expected expenses for our two special events, the e-cycling or uh, spring green event on April 1st and the summer uh, concert in the park. Uh, and uh, then on expected income, um, we did get the Metro grant to cover the e-cycling expenses. Uh, and they also included in that grant the $50 annual fiscal sponsorship fee that we owe to Seoul for the coming year. So that was very generous in Metro. And, um, and 
uh, we were surprised. Apparently, we won some uh, raffle uh, that Woodstock Business Association sponsored last year. So we got $100 in revenue uh, from them, but it hasn't been deposited yet. So it's listed as expected income. And let me see if you were to compare this report to last month's, there's a correction in the funds being held by Sewell in our fiscal sponsorship account uh, because they had not been sending us quarterly reports due to staff turnover at Southeast Uplift. And apparently they had deducted $50 for last year's fiscal sponsorship fee from our account. So I've updated the, um, the balance held at Southeast Uplift, as you can see, it's $262.23. So that leaves us with a forecast and balance of $5,888.35. And uh, unless there are, there is some discussion, because I did not receive any comments when I sent this out, I move that we adopt the revised uh, treasurer's report that you see on your screen for um, December, 2022. Would someone like to second it? I'll, I'll second, second. Okay. Who, who, who was that? Kim and Lorley, so <laughs> you can choose one of us. <laughs> okay, I'll choose, I'll choose Kim. <laughs> all right, seconded by Kim. All right, I'll call the roll. We'll, we'll go real fast, Kim. Hi. Gail. Hi. Casey. We'll come back to Casey. Mo. Hi. <laughs> oh, hi. Okay, good. All right. Mo. Hi. Okay, Pam. Hi. Derek. Hi. Uh, Vivian is not here. Laura Lee. Hi. Stephanie. Hi. Okay, passes unanimously. All right, very good. Thank you, Pam. Um, all right, do you want to uh, go on to the fiscal sponsorship <clears throat> business? Sure. Sure, we can get all lay that to rest for this the rest of this year. Okay, go ahead. Okay, very good. So uh, last month I sent you as a preview the our application for renewal of the Southeast Uplift fiscal sponsorship. Um, and so this month I'm just bringing it back for your approval. Uh, we did meet Stephanie and I with Soul staff, and they assured us that our application uh, met. Uh, and or exceeded all of the sole requirements. So they're, as staff, recommending to the sole executive committee that uh, our fiscal sponsorship be renewed, but we want to make sure that we have documented that the board approves it by formal vote. So are there any questions? Um, no, I'm just, I'm just hoping we don't have to hear the words fiscal sponsorship for the rest of the year, but... Um, that's not really a question. It's just a, a position. Okay. <laughs> no, so, thank you for all your work on that. It's been uh, it, it, it's been laborious because the uh, Southeast Uplift changed all their forms, and they they we're not always sure of their terminology, and there's just a bunch of um, a lot of hassle there. So thank you, Pam. You're welcome. So I move to approve BDNA's application for renewal of the Southeast Uplift's fiscal sponsorship agreement for the coming year. Second. Okay, thank you, Gail. All right, I'll call the roll again really fast. Kim. Aye. Gail. Aye. Casey. Aye, aye. <laughs> no, you only get one, Mo. <laughs> aye. Okay, Pam. Aye. Derek. Aye. Laura Lee. Aye. Stephanie, aye. Okay, passes unanimously. Wonderful. Okay. All right, let's go on to climate action. Um, I when I when I ran for chair, I I had in my candidacy statement work on the BDCC and on the, the TGM plan and on the bylaws. And um we're not going to be working on the bylaws right away because we have so so many other things to do. But I, I would like to add something to our official repertoire, even though we don't need to spend a lot of time and effort on it at this, at this moment. Uh, but I would like us to be officially on record as supporting climate action. And that means emissions, resilient, re emissions reductions and resilience in the face of extreme weather events. So we're already doing 
some of this work through the BDCC by making it a resilience center. And uh, we're, we're supporting uh, PBOT with uh, its Trees in the Street project, which I'll update you on. And, um, and then we'll be advertising Soak It Week in the summer to get people to water the trees and so on. So we are already taking some actions and then there'll be others that we'll take in the future, in particular um, postings at our website, if we can get that website under control. And I'm, work I'm working on that with, with help from uh, Brett, uh, Brett Farrell. Thank you very much, Brett. And uh, we're, go we're going to conquer this. Um, but so anyway, I would just like us to be on record as being a neighborhood mm -hmm. association that is dedicating itself to climate action. Uh, not all of them do. And I think uh, I would certainly like us to be that. So uh, I move that we include climate action in our repertoire of our work. Uh, do I hear a second? Second. Thank you, Gail. All right, so we have- we want solar. Um, I beg your pardon? We want solar. Oh, yeah, I know. Well, okay, we're working on that for the BDCC. And if the roof doesn't work, you know, there are ways to have elevated arrays over the back parking lot there. So we're going to make this work one way or the other. Uh, yes, solar. We want solar. Absolutely. Uh, um, okay, well, let me, um, uh, we've had the motion made and seconded. So let me call the roll again real fast. Kim? Aye. Gail? Aye. Casey? Aye. Good. You counted correctly. Mo? <laughs> Aye. <laughs> Tim? Aye. Derek. Aye. Laura Lee. Aye. Okay, and Stephanie, aye. All right, very fine. Um, then uh, real fast, uh, over the years, we've, um, we've operated according to this um, idea that um, if, there, if we have an expenditure that's under $250 or 250 and less, then the chair can okay it without getting approval from the board. But we can't find that this is ever in writing. And so, um, you know, as part of our work going forward, we should, we should collect some policies that we have in writing so that we know that the board actually approved these things and, and that they are um, a guide to the way we conduct our business. So the first question is, um, what should the cutoff point be? You, Pam, you, 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 I believe think that 250 is a good, yeah, and that's consistent with our past practice, and we can always adjust it by future board vote if necessary. Do you think that's adequate for your needs? I think so. It is a two fifty and less, right? So two hundred fifty dollars and one cent would re require. I'm exaggerating to make a point. I just yeah, otherwise we have to call a special board meeting if there's an urgent need for an expenditure uh, uh -huh. of any amount. Yeah, okay, so does 250 sound good to the rest of the board? That's what we've used. Laura Lee, go ahead. Um, I think it sounds good. Is that is that pretty much what other neighborhood associations have? I mean, is this is 250 kind of a norm or do you need more than that? Or and what kind of expenses um would you need without board approval? Just I I I I 100 percent support it. I was just curious. Those are good um, questions. Uh, we haven't taken a formal survey to my knowledge. Stephanie, have you checked that out? I haven't. Uh, Tina. So I know that when I was part of the board, things like petty cash for an event was an expense that was kind of pre-known, pre but not necessarily voted upon, if that makes sense. Yeah, it's usually for some sort of event. Um, you know, like when the movies in the park getting the concessions to sell, it was under that amount. And it was known that it was going to happen, but it didn't have to be voted on specifically per item. Right. Uh -huh. Okay, so if you're going to sell Pepsi Cola at the event, then we could, and you're going to buy $180 worth of Pepsi Cola, then you could just do it. Yes, yes, I see. Okay. exactly. Okay. Especially if we hypothetically think we might make, unless we're giving it away, make a profit. 
Well, yeah, we always we we're always very happy to accept donations. Yes, <laughs> yes um, over and above what uh, the expense uh, that we invested. That and I, uh, I had inquired about the amount um, because of inflation mm -hmm. and prices going up, and so I was just wondering, like two hundred fifty dollars fifteen years ago, ten years ago, went a lot farther mm -hmm. than now. So. I, I agree with Laura Lee's input as well. We're also poor. We are poor and we are we're being careful about our expenses and and um, but so do you want to say a higher amount, Laura Lee? Is that what you're suggesting? Oh, I see. Well, we have two hundred eighty five dollars in petty cash right now, but we have no authority to spend it. So do we want to uh, put it at two eighty five? <laughs> Well, we can just keep it at 250. Right. Maybe next year we can revisit it and think of we need to. There you go. Increase it. Okay. All right. Mo has a comment. Go ahead, Mo. Yeah, I was going to suggest we go ahead and move it up um, to at least 300 um, because it could be a couple things that happen at the same time. And Stephanie may be going forward with doing good things like she just did recently. So um, I would say at least go up to 300 um, and we can look at it again in the future. Okay. All right. Uh, what do y'all think that, that that's acceptable? I'm comfortable with that. I'm comfortable with that also. Okay. So, um, all right, let's, let's move that, um, uh, that for an expense that is $300 or less, uh, that can be let the I move that that can be left to the discretion of the chair without board approval. May that was not very grammatical, but you understand. I uh, second. I have a second. Lorley second. Who? Lorley. Gail? Lorley. Oh, Lorley. I'm sorry. Okay, fine. All right. Um, Laura Lee, all right, um, all right, let's just uh, vote on it real fast then that's gonna be $300. Let me make a note here. All right, uh, Kim. Stephanie, Hi. before you yes. call the roll, just yeah. as the treasurer, I mean, it's, it's understood, I think, that the chair would be submitting documentation after the fact in support of that expense like and recorded as the treasurer. Oh, absolutely. I mean, this has to all be done uh, yeah. officially and with full records and uh, yeah. Um, very good. Just had to make that point. No, that's good. Thank you very much, Pam. Um, okay, let's vote on it. Uh, we have moved and seconded it. Okay, Kim. Aye. Gail. I abstain because I I don't want to say no, but I don't want to say yes, so I must abstain. Okay. Um, are you are you, are you uncomfortable with the amount? I am. I am. I like the 250. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sorry. No, no, no. Don't be, don't ever no be way. sorry. Oh no, my I gosh. Know. Okay, so you're abstaining. Okay, Casey. Uh, yeah, I, I'm for it. Okay, Mo. I just want to put on the record here that, um, you know, if something's in the best interest of all of us, and you know, people could have differing opinions, but I just think um, some things that the chair is able to do um, on the behalf and good things or feel good things, uh, I think is worthy of the 300 um, that she can go ahead and, and make that decision. So I would say I on that. Okay, and there again, the chair has to provide total documentation justification for this and i if, trust you i do i do oh okay no I, I yeah no i know you do and i trust all of you totally um three 250 is just something we've always used and we're used to it but it's true that inflation has hit so um we're gonna go with 300 at the moment okay uh thank you mo all right pam i derek Aye. Carly. Aye. Okay, and Stephanie, aye. All right. Very good. Thank you, Gail, for not always um, 
joining the herd. I, I love you for that. And I love you for saying trailer court instead of manufactured dwelling park. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right, so we are, all right. Now, now we are done with the actions that re are required. Um, let's see, Kim, could you give us just some insight into what Southeast Uplift's board is dealing with these days? Well, we um, did the NICE retreat in November, uh, which was very good because we had, um, as you know, kind of a long, uh, contentious bunch of meetings, um, you know, dealing with uh, frivolous grievances. <clears throat> um, we did not have a meeting in January and our next meeting is Monday. So I did see though in the email that you guys had some questions that you'd like answered. So I wanted to make sure that I, I, you know, I received input as to what things people are wanting to know so that I could specifically bring those next meeting. Okay. Well, I wanted, I, I just visited the Southeast Uplift mm -hmm. site once and I saw some reference to community agreements and I had no idea what those are. Mm -hmm. I, I would love to know what those are. Okay. And I'd like to know what the executive director includes in her reports. She reports to the board. What is she telling you all? Oh, okay. Yeah. Because the agenda just says ED report, right? And, right. and um, so there's no way to know. And so I, I find okay. Southeast Uplift Board just very mysterious. We deal with the staff. But I, I just have no sense myself of what of what the board is is doing. You said for a long time it was dealing with uh, frivolous um, grievances. Oh, yeah. and so, oh, on. Yeah. so I mean, several of the meetings had you know one of the um, I think he was an he was an attorney. Um, well versed in you know some of the legal um, aspects of you know requirements that Southeast Uplift uh, what they do need to abide by and what what they don't and going over all of that and then we had the grievances it it, it was a lot of drama. Well, that's <laughs> not a good use for the board, right? I'll have to dwell on those things. Yeah, and in a lot of ways, honestly, I feel like, I mean, I've learned some things, obviously, for sitting through all of that, but I feel like the ins and outs of Southeast Uplift, I think now is the time going forward where there is actually going to be, you know, engagement in that way. So I'm hoping, you know, to get a, a better grasp on the, you know, all of these details. I'm familiar with some of them, uh, you know, of course, but you know, seeing how it can directly benefit our neighborhood as well, mm -hmm. you know, going forward, whether we apply for, you know, some more grants or other things like that. So I'm hoping that's the direction we're headed in now that all of this is behind us. It's good to hear that that yeah. the grievance stuff is behind you now. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad to hear that. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Okay. Thank you very much, Kim. Well, We'll look forward to um, you, you're telling us what community agreements are, just so we know <laughs> yeah, right. what, what they're up to. Okay, so Mo, what's happening on next door? Well, I don't need to tell you of the types of things that are going on here in Portland. Uh, actually, as just today, I happened to take a quick look um, of some additional things to add to my list. But um, so a few things on the safety side of things, I'm trying to find my notes here. Um, a couple things that have come up recently are um, dog owners macing other people's dogs. Um, that was one huge thing today, find my notes here. Um, the other uh, thing that stands out are carjackings. Um, so I don't know what else to say, but be careful. And um, 
try to stay out of any type of confrontation. Uh, it just seems like people are taking it to the extreme nowadays. So sometimes it seems in the moment that you have to say something or push back or fight back. But I, I would just say, yeah, lock your doors, Gail, true. Um, but if you are outside in this beautiful area and something happens and you just feel like you have to say something or push back or fight back, I don't know. It just seems like in the end, if you let it go, you might be able to get a good night's sleep and wake up the next day. And there might be sunshine, might be rain, but um, I don't know. It's just not worth it nowadays. It's uh, if you are a regular person walking the street with your dog or going to get coffee or biking, um, I would just say, don't, don't get involved because the other people who are confronting you or causing a problem, They've probably done it a lot more times than you have, and they're used to it. And I would just say, if you can walk away or turn away, don't turn your back, but you know, <laughs> step away if you can. And uh, I, other than that, I just don't know what else to say because it's kind of tough out there nowadays um, in all the big cities. It's not just Portland, as you see in next door, oh, I'm moving away. It's not like old Portland, this and that, but a lot of cities aren't what they used to be. They're growing, but if we can just try to, you know, be safe and keep an eye out for each other and, um, stay out of, you know, stay out of the fray or the fire. Um, okay, that's well, that, that sounds good. Just stay cool. Don't get involved. Don't get shot, right. <laughs> don't get maced. All right, <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much, Mo. Uh, okay, Gail, uh, what's happening on the summer event? Where do, where do things stand right now? That's a really good question. I don't oh. know. Oh. They have got our application. We're on the list. I don't know which movie they're gonna let us have, which Friday night they're gonna let us have. All they want right now is our application and that's in and submitted and received and acknowledged. Oh, good. Okay, well, well thank I, you. I just thought I'd ask. I know you'll tell I us, but I thought I would just I, ask. I send Jed emails every now and then with, what's up? <laughs> so Gail, in prior years, when do they normally tell us? April or May. Okay, so it's early days. Oh, okay, so we're, I'm, I'm, I'm questioning you too early here. Yeah, some Thank people you. haven't even got their applications in. Oh, okay. okay. I got mine in December. I know. It was in December, and I think that the deadline is the end of February or something right. like that, right? right? Yeah. But, so thank you, Gail. Yeah. We're high. We're not I'm only on, on the it. list, if but I we're high on the list. On, I would be on it. <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> um, Okay, very fine. All right, so Vivian is gone, but she was going to talk to us about the tree project, which I'll update you on, but it has to do with creating ball bouts into the street and then planting trees in those ball bouts with, then there's parking along the curb in between the ball bouts. They're looking at doing it, and I'm sorry about this, Kim, from 72nd to 92nd. So it's not going to be on your stretch no. of Duke. And um, so Vivian is in touch with the people at Peabody and uh, can um, let us know. And I'll check her uh, with her before I send you the update. We'll, we'll tell you everything we know. There's I'm very already, sorry, Kim. I was already talking, speed bumps on 72nd to 92nd also. They already have them, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So there was a presentation on this project by the uh, project manager at the TGM advisory committee meeting last um, time we met. Mm -hmm. And it seemed very well organized, very data driven. There were a lot of considerations in selecting the demonstration site, like where the underground utilities were. So I think they made a fairly compelling argument. Maybe we could get them to make a presentation to uh, Brentwood Darlington at some point. Okay, that would be yeah. good. 
Yeah, because, you know, they seem to make a lot of compelling arguments to avoid the areas that, you know, sometimes uh, need it the most, you know. <laughs> that too. Hey, Gail. You know, but I, I'm happy for the 72nd to 92nd. I just wish they were doing more. I know. Yeah, you know, because it really is. Sidewalks? What's that? Sorry, what? Trees and sidewalks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're, so, yeah, I don't know where the sidewalk project is. Every time I visit the site, it says in design, in design, in design. Just to give a percentage, like 50%, 90%. So I'm going to have to get after them about the sidewalks. Um, yeah. yeah. And you know, there, and the, the elementary school, of course, is in that area on yeah. Duke. So, I mean, that they definitely need to protect the kids. And you know, where I am, we have a large amount of kids that take the bus every morning, you know? And so I keep try to keep an eye out for them when possible, too. But you know, there's a lot of kids that do walk on Duke. Uh huh. Anyway, well, there may be more kids walking on Duke when the bus mm -hmm. is removed. Um, yeah. Anyway. Okay. We'll, we'll uh, I'll update you on that. Mm -hmm. um, Derek, how are how, how are housing sales doing? Um. Yeah. The um. I don't know. Things. I was just looking at the statistics here, and I. Maybe next time I'll send these out, but there's like um, 21 active listings in our neighborhood. Um, average sale price is like $312 a square foot. Um, you're seeing things being on the average on the market for like two months or 63 days. Um, and then um, pending, you're seeing things where it's, uh, oh, average sales price or list price is 307. Um, so what I'm seeing is, uh, and sold average square uh, foot price is 345. There's like uh, 11 solds and 16 pending. So I'm what I'm finding and seeing in the marketplace is as interest rates kind of go up and down. Um, you know, when the interest rate goes down, you have more buyers able to buy given their fixed income or whatever income they're at. And so, um, and I'm seeing new construction going in. Um, do we have a land use person? Uh, who is our land use? We don't. Okay. Well, we we but, have some vacancies, Derek. <laughs> okay. Oh. Okay. I uh, stuck my foot in that, didn't I? I'm Derek. <laughs> it's okay. I know. I know it's okay. No, we're, no, no, we're going to work on it. <laughs> so next meeting, um, there's like six new houses going in where a large house. This is just uh, across the street, south of me. So that's what Mount Scott or Lita, since I'm on 66 and Duke. North, it's the north of you, right? On the uh, side of Duke, right? Oh, that's correct. That's north. Okay. <laughs> I got turned around. But yeah, no, yeah, that's I think okay. <laughs> that's Mount Scott, or, but I'm going to be contacting the builder there. Uh, but he's getting six, he's putting six built houses where there was one house on one large oversized wow. lot. It might have been, I think, like 20,000 square feet. And the uh -huh. house was closer to where the alley is, but it's a corner lot and it's all just immediately north of me. And uh, but I'm getting uh, details on that, but it'll be interested to see what that goes for because uh, they're smaller homes. And I'm thinking, yeah, I'm just trying to get details on the new construction that's going on. But um, that'll be interesting. What that'll be kind of making our market, right? That oversized lot, six new homes. Uh, no, I, I think that's the trend of the future. That is that kind they of seem kind of small, but they're two story. And it'll be interesting because I don't, the builders and developers are pretty savvy, right? So they're trying to maximize, they're tr they have to make a deep of uh, something nice so that they'll get top dollar for, right? Yeah. Uh, because they get punished if you build something ugly <laughs> or yeah. if it's not functional, buyers, you know, will repel against that. But it'll be interesting. I'm trying to learn more about that. I am hearing about tax credits for maybe going all electric and avoiding gas even though I know a lot of consumers out there still want gas, but you know things are changing and morphing. And so it'll be interesting to see these new permits, what people are doing, You know, if they're gonna go gas or try to get the tax credits and go all electric. Uh, but that's what I'm seeing. So we have a healthy market, but at the same time, I'm also talking to sellers about, you've got homeless people parked on the streets, living out of cars. I recently contacted my PBOT person and he told me that the city currently isn't doing anything if somebody's just living in a car and living there and uh, there's no license plate or registration. Um, it's not actionable is what I've been told. Um, but who knows, that could change. 
Um, so, but that's kind of where we are. So, okay. Um, All yeah. right, good. No, that's interesting, and and I look forward to uh, learning about that that six unit place and right. how much um, how much those units are going for. I'll have that for next month, and then of course, if I see anything else in the neighborhood, uh, especially new construction, because um, yeah, I'll bring that up as well. Absolutely. Okay. Oh, wonderful. Thank you. But a healthy market. Okay, that's that's yes. very interesting. Okay, very good. All right, so we're getting close to wrap up time. Um, I just wanted to remind you, uh, we still have a, a board mini retreat uh, scheduled for March 18. I'm going to be soliciting you for what kind of a wonderful um, catered lunch we should order and that we will begin our our, our retreat with. And um, uh, so I'm hoping that, that as many of you can come, it's just for the afternoon, so it won't be a big time expenditure, but it, it would be fun to just get together and relax and talk. And I have, I'm working on a, a little agenda, but it's not going to be anything punitive or rigorous. It should be just fun. Um, so- Stephanie, I have a question. Uh, sure. when, when does that start? What is the time period? Um, it's, uh, let's see. Russell said one o'clock, but I'm assuming that the, the caterers will deliver the food shortly after one and I am planning on having it set out for us. So I'm probably gonna okay. ask us to assemble at 115 to start coming at 115 and then maybe we start lunch around 1.30. Okay. And, uh, and we'll, ju we'll just go two, three hours, something like that. I, I haven't timed it out exactly yet, but I have some activities for us. And okay. one of the things I'm gonna ask each of you to do uh, um, before you come, I'm gonna give you a website of another neighborhood association and ask you to spend five minutes there just poking around to see what is different about them compared with us. And then that is something I'd like you to bring to the, um, to the retreat, just uh, because it is, uh, it is interesting. We might get some good ideas from what other people are doing of course, we would like them to get good ideas from us because we're the best. But we'll we'll go and 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 shop around and look at what the others are doing. Um, and um, so anyway, I'll be um, yeah, send reaching out to you about the retreat as we get closer to it. So I hope as many of you can come as possible. I'm, I'm looking forward to just spending some downtime with you over some good food. Uh, okay, so let's see. Um, I had. Um, suggested getting together on um, on one evening, I was calling a Eureka board meeting, a Eureka night to uh, talk about fundraising. But I want to ask you, um, are we all feeling overburdened? Is, I, I don't know if I want to ask, uh, add another work night. I mean, this would be for an hour Zoom. I was gonna, it wouldn't, it would be irregular. It wouldn't be every month. Um, but I wanted to get your thoughts on fundraising. I've gotten some from, Casey already, he's jumped the gun. Uh, thank you, Casey. Uh, but um, I, I would like, I don't want people to start feeling that they're exhausted, overburdened. Um, uh, and uh, so I just wanted to get a feel from you. Would you be willing to spend an hour, maybe once every couple of months on, on some subject? Like in this case, it's just brainstorming over fundraising. What do you think? How about you, Laura Lee? What do you think? I knew you'd call on me. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, I'm okay. no, I was joking. Um, I think that once every couple of months would be fine as long as it's not um, required. I mean, if we can join, we can join. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm starting a new position on Monday. I'm finally going back to work and I just don't know what my workload's gonna be coming up this spring. Mm -hmm. um, I also want to comment that board members know um, my extracurricular activities in my neighborhood, and I feel like it's almost like a second job that I have trying to maintain the safety um, of, of where I live. So um, at times I do feel overwhelmed, at other times I don't. So I think that it's a really good idea to meet. Um, I just don't want to have that pressure um, that as an officer on the board that I'm required to be there. Okay, that makes sense. that's good feedback. Um, I mean, suppose um, 
suppose I suggested every so often, and then those who can attend do, and if no one can, that's fine. That's the way it is. Uh, and maybe you share your ideas with me via email. We could keep it very casual. How does that sound to everybody? You can join us on craft night. We can talk and craft. That's true. Yes. Um, there you go. Yeah. 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 Sounds good. Okay. Um, well, all right. So why don't we leave it like that? Um, uh, then I will, um, I will go ahead and reach out to you for you reconnite for the February for February 16th about fundraising. If you can join, fine. If you can't, fine. No pressure. All right. Okay. Goodbye, Mary. All right. See you all next month. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Um, that sounds good because I don't, you know, we've had some really full agendas and lots to talk about and speakers and, and uh, uh, for some of us, there's a lot of work behind the scenes and we're, we're getting exhausted. So I don't want, I don't want our board members to feel exhausted and put upon and so on. So we'll just keep that casual and contribute as you can for uh, Eureka Night. Uh, okay. Um, now I want to remind you that um, you know we need a treasurer. So please talk to friends and family. Uh, maybe you can um, find someone who has bookkeeping experience, loves bookkeeping, loves figures, loves to add and subtract, <laughs> and loves to add in the dividend of 27 cents per month and um, uh, uh, who would be contributing to some really important projects like the BDCC and the planning effort and our climate action. So we're at a very crucial time in our, in our neighborhood history where we, um, we have a chance to you know, save the community center and do something really important and model, model our work to the community. So if you can sell a bookkeeper on that, that would, you know, <laughs> that, that would be great. Um, so please do keep in mind you know, Pam volunteered to serve through May. She's been working incredible number of hours behind the scenes because um, we've just had unexpected challenges with that position. And uh, she did not ever promise to stay on permanently and shouldn't be. She should be working on BDCC and other members. So thank you, Pam. We were trying to find a successor for you. And um, so please everybody keep it, keep it in mind. And, uh, I nominate Tina. She loves numbers and has lots of time. <laughs> that, joking. Uh, I'm joking. Sorry. Yeah, no, Boy, trying to make friends, Gail. <laughs> so, <laughs> so as a quiet little note, Gail's partially correct and Tina loves numbers. I minored in accounting because of my businesses. But no, I don't have time and I know no longer wish to be a board member so yeah no thanks <laughs> okay yeah, but maybe you know do you know a do you know a sister accountant not in the neighborhood no how about in the neighborhood next door we're, we're pretty flexible here no yeah, she's but, all the way over in in powell uh foster powell well does she know anyone who's down that way down this way i mean <laughs> okay, never mind. It's all right. <laughs> Bethany, I have a quick how about advertising on next door or something like that? I'm, we need I'm a... going to do that. I'm going to have okay. a whole list of things to do, but I'm just starting with you all tonight. Okay. Uh, gotcha. I, I'm pr pressuring you. Mm -hmm. It just said, said I don't want to put pressure on you, but I am putting pressure on you about the treasurer uh, mm -hmm. because we, 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 we need to make sure that that position is, um, is filled. And you can also say that Pam and I will be here to help transition the new person in, uh, so there won't it, it won't be difficult. And we have lots of documentation now about what needs to be done and how to do it. So that that part, learning the job, should not be uh, a, a, anything that's you know punitive and horrifying. So, okay. Well, thank you. Please please keep an eye out. And then finally, uh, two two um, issues. One, do we want to begin meeting in person? Um, we, we're required by law to do hybrid meeting. And the way, one way to do it is to have two laptops 
we go to the community center and we set up one laptop at um, next to where the facilitator is. That would be me. And somebody operates that, that laptop and is the Zoom host. Another laptop is set somewhere else and turned around so the camera is, fa uh, the camera is facing the um, outward to people who are attending the meeting. And somebody signs in that computer as though it were a person, but it just sits there. But um, it's the setup allows people, all kinds of people to join from the neighborhood and the extra computer is just like another person, but is um, but is the serving as a camera that that brings in images of the people who are sitting around the table. And um, so we just need to, Southeast Uplift is trying to get official equipment for neighborhood associations. We don't have that. I have a, a laptop and Pam does, so we could um, we could meet the letter of the law between the two of us. But the question is, do we want to start meeting at the Brentwood Darlington Neighborhood uh, uh, Community Center? That sounds really complicated. Yeah, you know, I, I, it, it, um, I, I don't love it, but there's this law. <laughs> I mean, we can continue on Zoom if that's what people prefer. There is no pressure here. Mo, are you trying to say something? I sure am, Stephanie. Okay, I'm sorry, I didn't see you. Yeah, no problem. Hey, um, I think maybe when it gets warmer, we should maybe set one of the months of the warmer, sunny months here in the Northwest, um, like say maybe June or something like that as a, an end time that people can show up and say hello to each other and um, maybe also bring stuff to munch on or whatever and just say hello. And we could see after that how people feel about it, but- um, Okay, so a general meeting, just very casual yeah. and uh, we can experiment with the computers and, and uh, okay, a low pressure kind of meeting. That sounds good to me, mm -hmm. all right. How about, does that, does that sound like a good approach, a laid back approach? I like that idea. Okay, fine. All right, we'll just, we'll just kind of stroll towards an in-person meeting, all right? There you go. Okay, Strolling. Okay. finally, one more issue, and I, I need the board vote to bring it up to, and because the bylaws say, if you add something to the agenda, then, then um, uh, you have to vote on it. And, uh, and that is, I wanna talk about, Harney Park and what to do about it. So uh, if um, I would, I move that we address the deteriorating situation at Harney Park and what our response should be and add it to our agenda. Do I have a second? Second. Okay, thank you, Gail. All right, so. Yeah, we're well, already over time is, how long is this report? It'll take me about one minute, I'll, I'll hurry. Oh, fine. Okay, we. I, we, the question is, do we call a meeting for uh, residents to complain and tell us all about what's wrong at going on, uh, wrong at Harney Park? Excuse me, or is that a waste of time? I, um, the suggestion has been made that we try to find some responsible officials first who agree to listen to us, being us being the residents. Um, and only then bother to have a meeting because just a, a session where we complain uh, about, with justification, but we only hear one another is probably a waste of time. We need officials there. Yeah, I agree. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, then, um, okay, Mo, yeah. Real quick, I just want to say having, you know, a um, little more information than some. Um, that it sounds like there's been some progress, but um, in the meantime, uh, maybe we could all come together or talk about it in some way, but do something now that some uh, of those vehicles and stuff have been removed to do some kind of um, blocking. Uh, I believe I heard or read recently um, about that, that possibly um, some of us 
uh, Stephanie, you can maybe send out an email to all of us interested and um, talk about how we can maybe stop the vehicles from coming back in since uh, the city of Portland maintenance folks are taking a break for a little bit. Um, maybe we could um, do some type of blockade, you know, I don't know, like, you know, with uh, some previous people, they had done the plastic uh, barriers, you know, we could either do something like that or to bark chips and uh, get some chip drops um, that you can't get in there or like uh, maybe cinder blocks or how about those tree watering buckets just don't put the water in yet because you have the discretion now right. get $300 worth. Okay. So, All yeah. right. So in the interest of time, let's talk, let's continue this conversation uh, via email. I'll, I'll reach out to you. But um, I think uh, having trying to line up some officials is really critical. So Otherwise, this, you know, this is a meeting is uh, there's no point. Okay. Otherwise, it's a wine yeah. fest. I think, I think that's a really good point, Stephanie oh, and Gail. Right. I, I, I really want to hear from the neighbors and I, I really want to hear from the people around Harney Park because I drive by there every day and I understand and I see what's happening. Um, but unless we have some sort of end goal, um, having a meeting with neighbors to just talk about how upset they are. I don't know if that's gonna get us very far. Um, I, I would love I to have some officials there to, to talk us mm -hmm. to talk to us I, and them. I agree. So I, um, Pam and I will brainstorm and try to figure out if we, which officials to call on and see if we can get somebody lined up and then, then proceed with setting up a meeting if we can. And, um, uh, and in the meantime on, via email, we can talk about any kind of um, warrior action on the street we can take with with wood chips or whatever. Um, okay, all right, I'm sorry, we've run over again. Uh, I beg your pardon. We'll try to have a less full agenda in the future. Uh, thank you all for hanging in there and for all you do and for your support and, and for your, your, your interest in our neighborhood. I, uh, I really appreciate you all tremendously. And, so, okay. Yes. Thank, you, thank you, Stephanie. Else? Yes. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. you okay. Too, All right. Let's bye bye, y'all. Go bye. and have a wonderful weekend, and I'll be in touch with updates and and uh, and chip, uh, chips discussions and so on. <laughs> All right. Yay. See ya. Okay. Bye. 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 bye, -bye.